The Poussière of Ohio, wearing his beautiful chapeau but who's his cavaliero. The Emperor of the Far West, when he begins his revolver, he can shoot a fly d'un seul geste. In the desert, there is person, never a coup de téléphone, he's a cowboy, poor and lonesome. Il n'a pas peur de personne. Pas surtout des Dalton. Il n'a pas peur de personne. You for this lucky look. Lucky look. I'm gonna get you. Oh, I'm gonna get you. You caught Crazy Bob. Good thing I just repainted the cell. Sorry about this, Bernie. I'm making you miss the rodeo. Now, I only miss the mayor's opening speech, my lucky break. Get in there. You better watch your lucky look, cause I'm gonna get you. Yeah. What do you say we go and have a look at this rodeo, Jolly Jumper? Must we? I don't enjoy watching a lot of horses misbehave. I wonder why he brought me to a political rally. <laughs> Today's rodeo will receive this magnificent gold-plated trophy, which will be presented to him by the equally magnificent Miss Nothing Gulch. The lucky winner will also receive a four-dollar gift certificate from Barnaby Nail Coffin, our local undertaker. Let's have a big hand for Barnaby, folks. <laughs> Say, Sonny, you competing in the rodeo? Nah, Jolly Jumper gets jealous. He doesn't like it when I mount other animals. <laughs> what crime did the horse commit to be locked up like this? Hey, what the? Let me go! Oh, I didn't do anything! Let me go! Let me go! Gentlemen, one moment, please. I won't beat around the bush. Does rodeo riding pay well? I didn't think so. I have a proposition for you. Blister and banknotes, this is definitely the best payday that I ever had. Thank you and goodbye. Gentlemen, I'll get straight to the point. Does rodeo riding pay well? And now, and now it's time, time for our first contestant. contestant. Let's, Let's hear it for Joshua Pemberton! Go get him, Joshua Pemberton! Uh, sorry, folks, but Joshua has pulled out with a sudden leg cramp. So we'll go straight to our next contestant, Aloysius Gridlaw! It seems that Aloysius has had to pull out because he's got a leg cramp, too. So let's move on to our third contestant, Big Joe Miller! Huh? I have some more bad news, folks. Big Joe Miller's come down with a leg cramp, so we'll move on to Nathaniel O'Leary. Pete, no, the stand can't hold this much weight. That's strange, young fella. I didn't know cramps was contagious. Me neither, old timer. Live and learn. Huh? May the best man win, Todor. My sentiments exactly, Bogdan. Two contestants left. First, Todor Vasho Bolo, whatever, from Paldavia. Where the heck's Paldavia? I think it's in Canada, Mr. Mayor. Yes, folks, our rodeo's finally getting underway with a contestant all the way from Canada.
Huh? The horse escaped from jail. Hey, in the name of the law, I order you to get back in your cell right now. Time, three and a half seconds. You might as well give yourself up. I have you surrounded. The forces of evil are ganging up on me to prevent me from enforcing the law. But I promise you, I'll be back. Our second contestant is uh, Bogdan Vashobolo Thingamajig, and he's from Canada, too. Those Canadians all look alike, and they have the same name. How can you do this? It's because of this political rally, and that politics turn good men into crooks. <laughs> Canadian. They both got the same time. I believe I win, Bogdan. No, I win, Todor. Todor and Bogdan, the Vasho Volo stuff, are the joint rodeo champions of Nathan Gulch. I want my money back! Me too! I want her money back too! Mr. Mayor, you've got to do something before there's a riot. I know what I'll do. Citizens, to celebrate this occasion, the town will buy you all a drink. What kind of drink, Joseph, dear? The soft drink. We want a real drink. Hey, watch my hat. Sorry, I didn't notice your hat. Or the pug ugly face that was right under it. Darn. Why do political rallies always end this way? This town sure knows how to throw a fine rodeo, huh? Care for a hot one, cowboy? No thanks. I'm not in the mood. But, uh, maybe my dog is. I don't believe it. He's trying to bribe me. But I won't give in to temptation. It don't be belongs to me! No, it's mine! Who are those guys? Does he really think he'll win me over? With a plump sausage. <laughs> okay, so I'm corruptible. But I'm also well fed. Tudor, what happens if our competition ends in a tie? We'll have no choice but to fight a shootout, Bogdan. We would like to see a list of outlaws on the loose in this state. Outlaws on the loose? Sorry, gents, we ain't got none of those. A state in the Wild West that has no outlaws? I find that hard to believe. It's true. Lucky Luke has arrested every single crook in the state. <laughs> Except our congressman. Lucky <laughs> Luke, I'm gonna get that guy. The last outlaw who was still on the loose Lucky was Crazy Luke, Bob I'm here. Luke caught him this morning. Uh... Tudor, do you think officers of the law are well paid here in America? No better than in Poltavia, I suppose. Lucky Lucky. I'm gonna ah, shut up. May the best man win, Tudor. Yes, Bogdan, may the best man win. Ah, I'll look after the trophy, Tudor. No, I'll look after it, Bogdan. Oh, a little lower. Oh, yes, I said perfect. Uh, it must be my conscience that's weighing on my stomach. Lucky Luke! I have a confession to make. I've done a terrible thing. I don't deserve your friendship. What's wrong, Bernie? Did you eat too many beans again? Wow, that man was on his hind legs begging. I hope he gets a nice biscuit. Oh, I'm a low down, dirty dog. <laughs> uh, 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 no biscuit for him. I took a bribe to let Crazy Bob out of jail. Now he's on the loose, and you know as well as I do that he's looking to get you. <laughs> Who paid you, Bernie? Those two strangers in the matching outfits. I'll settle this once and for all. 
while he's playing hero, who's going to finish giving me my rub down? <laughs> Gotcha. Putting your hands up. Oh? Hey, what's the big idea? I saw him first. He's mine. No, he's mine. You always get everything. Me? I suppose you're going to deny that Mom always liked you best. Uh, I can see this is a personal thing, so I'll just run along. I think it's time for an explanation. Yee, lucky look. I'm gonna get you. Would you cut it out? You are really bothering me? Lucky Luke Gee, I'm gonna give get... it a rest, Bob. Now then, I want to know what's going on. Permit me to introduce myself. Bogdan Vashilo Holyolovich, Crown Prince of Polvaevia. And this is my brother, Tudor. I too am a Crown Prince. Our Uncle King Slobdo is an old man. Sooner or later he'll kick the bucket. And when he does, one of us will succeed him. To decide which one, he has sent us on a three-stage competition in the Wild West. You see, Uncle Slobko is kind of weird and he loves cowboy stories. So I'm guessing stage one was to win a rodeo. And the other two? To capture a dangerous outlaw. And bring back the scalp of a redskin. <laughs> <laughs> We're at peace with our Indian neighbors, so you're not scalping anybody. But I can help you find a couple of outlaws if you like. You can? Yes, in America, bribing a sheriff is a crime. <whistles> so you are both outlaws. Oh! Get your hands up! Lucky Luke! Ah, there you are. Those matching princes left town this morning and headed for the camp where Chief Honest Eagle lives with his no-joke tribe. Huh? He's quick on the draw, but he's even quicker getting dressed. No, no, Rinton Dumb, you stay here. Yeah. I'd rather stick around, but since he so obviously wants me to go with him... No, that's not it. Oh, how humiliating. Why am I always forgetting my rain dance? How about this? Oh, Uncle Frank? Tudor, stop copying me all the time. Excuse me? You're the one copying me, and this red skin is mine. If you've got some nerve. I am the one who hit him first. No, I am, you copycat. Who are you calling copycat? Copycat! I think I've got it! <laughs> Jolly, I wish you'd hold still. I have got it! I have got it! I have got it! I have got it! Spastic Sparrow should knock first before he comes into teepee. I'm sorry for barging in, Chief Honest Eagle, but <laughs> I have got it. I have got it. Whatever it is you got, I sure hope it not be catching. No, silly. I mean my rain dance. I remember it now. Spastic Sparrow, small piece of advice. Next time you show me you remember Rain Dance, do it outside! Uh-oh, I seem to be lost. I should never have wandered away from the camp. 
I am sure we can reach some kind of accommodation. Would you like to increase your income? A simple no would have sufficed. I want a scalp and I will get one. You took the words right out of my mouth, Tudor. Ah, I found the camp, thanks to my flawless sense of direction. All right, let's move out. Uh-oh. Honest Eagle greet his friend with the pure heart and retro hairstyle. Yeah, likewise, Chief. I see your Rain Man finally got his memory back. No Joke Tribe want to thank Lucky Luke's companions. Bump on head that restored Spastic Sparrow's memory came from those two. Honest Eagle do anything to repay them. Did you say anything? Give us the scalp of a redskin. The scalp of a redskin, you sure? Mm -hmm. You got it. Honest Eagle, keep his word. Why is it that whenever we go camping, it rains? Come in, hairless hummingbird. I see two pale faces, but only one scalp. Who do I give it to? To me! No, to me! <laughs> well, I'd say there's only one way to settle this. You'll ride out to the Mesa, go round it, and come back. First one of you who reaches totem pole will be given the scalp. Are you ready to rumble? May the best man win, Tudor. Yes, Bogdan, may the best man win. Look at that! They're going for a ride. I think I'll go too. Honest Eagle getting mildly concerned. Does Spastic Sparrow know how to stop rain? Um, let's see now. What's on the tip of my tongue? Hey, don't worry, Chief. I'm sure it'll come back to me. Uh, hoopa, hoopa, ha, ha, ha. Oh, no, that's not it. Uh, give me one minute, will ya? Uh, one, two, three, four. Nose forward. One, two, tail extended. Scalp goes to dog with funny nose. Why am I wearing a hat? I'm not cold. As though he didn't look silly enough before. There is only one way to settle this, Bogdan. Yes, Tudor. I can't think why we didn't do it in the first place. Pistols at high noon, Tudor? On Main Street. See you there. <sighs> I can't leave them alone for five seconds. So, they're back, and they're looking grim. What are they planning, Luke? Showdown. Are you kidding? The way those two shoot, someone could get hurt. Don't worry, Bernie. I think I know how to get rid of them. Hey, muchacho. Want to earn a quarter? Si, senor Luke. Follow me. Okie dokie. Someone really ought to tell them they've forgotten rackets and a net. You sure I should stay out of this? Yep. I beg your pardon, sir. Hold still for a moment, if you please. Excellent. You'll be glad to know that I offer a group rate. Well, I gotta go. 
Uh-huh. Just as I thought. You gotta fight by the rules, gents. Hmm? Tudor, you dirty cheater! You hired gunmen to shoot for you! Only two of them, Bogdan. Senior, look! A telegram has arrived for these strangers! Gentlemen, before you start shooting, you better listen to this. King Slobko has had a change of heart. Stop. The throne of Paul Davia will go to the first crown prince who reaches the North Pole on foot. Stop. Did you say North Pole? On foot? May the best man win, Bogdan. Yes, Tudor, may the best man win. <laughs> Tell me, Luke, if that telegram hadn't arrived, would you have let them shoot it out? I sent the telegram, Bernie. You did? Luke? Where'd he go? He's quick on the draw, but he's even quicker to disappear. I'm a poor lonesome cowboy. Gentlemen, I'm sorry to say you've fallen victim to the notorious Dark Peppermint. Come again? Dark Peppermint, king of the bank robbers. What makes you so sure, stranger? Well, his signature. This here fella eats peppermints like they were going out of style. He got indigestion? Who knows? No one around here has ever seen his face or knows his real name, hence the moniker. And you've been hot on his trail. You could say that. Sheriff? And you don't know his name or what he looks like. How in tarnation you know him when you see him? By his minty, fresh breath. Lumberville. No smoking, no spitting, no fighting, no fussing, no chewing tobacco, no yelling, no cussing. Well, what do you say, Jolly? Hey, I'll try anything once. <laughs> Have yourself a hot bath and some rolled oats on me. Only fitting. You've been on me all week. Pardon me, sir. Your scuff protectors, house rules. Lemonade, shaken, not stirred. Sorry, we don't serve strong drink here, mister. Can I interest you in a tea, chamomile? Uh, how about some verbena tea? Uh, you 
really sure you need that firearm? Why don't you let me hold that for you? We don't like folks carrying arms in Slumberville. Not a chance. He goes where I go. A uh, nice town, very clean. We like it. Are you here for the... Uh... Actually, I'm looking for a friend. Lots of friendly folks in Slumberville. My friend eats these by the case. You wouldn't happen to have seen him, would you? Extra strength. Must be quite the desperado. Hey there. Hello. Welcome to Slumberville. Thanks. Willie Willowpillow, chief constable of the tamest little town in the West. You plan to use that gun? In theory, no. That's good, because we Slumbervillians look askance at firearms. As you can see, I carry none myself. You here for, uh... Uh, I was wondering if you have a bank here. The building having its roof repaired down the street. You can't miss it. And if it's to safely lock up your, uh, I'll gladly hold it for you. Thanks, but I feel naked without it. Morning, morning. I was up on the roof, sorry. Yeah, I saw that. You been having some trouble? What do you mean? Oh, that? No, no, that's nothing. Uh, this for a deposit? Hmm? Keep a lot of money in that safe, do you? Money in there? Oh, no. We never keep any money in here. However, if you care to lock up your gun... <laughs> oh, no thanks. I'll uh, see you later. This town is plenty strange, old boy. A saloon that only serves tea, a constable with no gun, no money in the bank. Right, Reverend. <coughs> right as rain, Bertha. You see, my friend, carrying a gun leaves one open to the temptation to use it. What was that, Woolly Pillow? Oh. Why, the Reverend Calvin Wright stuff, our magnificent old pastor in his flying machine. You're all nuts in this town, you know. I know, and we're very protective of our nuts and don't want them exposed to violence. Please put that thing away before you hurt someone. <laughs> You look like your shorts are in the knot, stranger. <laughs> May I suggest an orange blossom tonic as a stress buster? I need peppermint drops. This brand here. Fresh Brothers. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh... oh, here we are. Sell a lot of those? <laughs> well, you hardly ever. They're too strong for slumber villains. Aaron, give me a large bottle of iodine, some gauze bandages, and a big jar of camphor balm. Uh, test flight coming up, Bertha. Keep it down, Aaron Honeydrop. The walls have ears, you know. And give me six tins of Fresh Brothers peppermints for the Baron. Those Fresh Brothers must be catching on. Who's she? Bertha. She keeps house for the river and the right stuff. Don't get her riled up. She's obsessed with the fear of spies. Fear of spies? There's a whole lot of folks like to get their hands on one of Wright Stuff's machines. Don't know for the life of me why, though. Personally, I've had my roof repaired 74 times. But things are better now. He almost always hits the bank. What did I tell you about guns? You have them, you draw them, you draw them, you fire them. I'll be huh? confiscating this huh? for the duration. What do you want? I'd like to see the Reverend Wright stuff. 
You a journalist? Uh, no. Then you're a spy, so vamos! We'll never be ready in time, Reverend. You! Relax, Baron. Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. Perhaps not, but it's only 48 hours till it's a big day. Just thinking about it you upsets my stomach. Wooly Pillow, I need my gun. We're leaving us so soon. I need to catch a dangerous criminal who's hiding in your flying reverend's parsonage. <laughs> Ridiculous! The reverend defies the law of gravity, not the law of the land. They call this guy the Baron, but he's the king of high-flying crooks. How can you accuse an aristocrat of being a criminal? The Fresh Brothers squealed on him. I'm wondering who's not here, us or you? We'd better get outside in case the roof falls in. To be some folks just couldn't resist taking aim, trying to shoot him down. Hence the guns in the vault. Fifty bucks on the bank. I say the church at thirty to one odds. I'm gonna parlay this into a no wheelchair. Short. Don't worry, ma'am. We'll get him down. <laughs> Your leg's busted, all right. The road to heaven's paved with fractures. He'll be in a cast for a month, Reverend. A whole month? But the big day is in 48 hours. A pilot! I need a pilot! You up for it? Count me out, Ralph. My dear parishioners, any volunteers? I'll do it. Take away their guns and they go insane. So, my boy, do you also hear the clarion call of the clouds? Don't see how much harder this would be than riding a bucking bronco in the rodeo. Get ready for the ride of your life! Hee-haw! Try and sit still, Reverend. I don't believe you've met the redoubtable Bertha, my housekeeper. And without Fix-It, my mechanic, I'd be lost. Lucky Luke, lonesome cowboy. He could be a spy, for all we know. A spy? How terribly amusing. <laughs> And this is the Baron Von Flaps, my most generous backer. Baron, I'd like you to meet Lucky Luke, our new test pilot. Badwin Von Flaps, at your service. Do you fly, Baron? Me? Fly? Goodness, no. I suffer from prayer sickness. What's wrong? Luke's never ridden anyone but me. You pump here, which opens the valve, which starts the propellers moving. If the valve doesn't open, start praying. Hey, don't let him scare you, my boy. My Calvinopter's a state-of-the-art machine. Pumper! 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 Stupendous, my lad! You're a born aeronaut! Good old Lucky Loop to Lou.
You're not hungry, Baron? Hungry? 36 hours from <laughs> big day? What's this big day stuff anyway? The official launch of the Calvinopter over at Fort Big. Fort Big? Biggest military base in the whole country. If the demonstration flight goes off without a hitch, the Army's gonna finance our work, aren't they, Baron? Yes, if the flight is successful. <laughs> First you pump, then the valve opens, then the propellers turn, and pumper, pumper, pumper! No, I catch you. I was just practicing breathing at high altitudes. Successful! You're an ace, Luke! Oh, anybody could do it. Say, Baron, how about we go for a spin? Uh, we ought to test how much weight it can carry first. Is that really necessary? Yes, you see, I want... The Army wants the flying machine capable of carrying heavy loads. Heavy loads of what? Uh, I don't agree with this procedure. I don't either. See, this machine practically flies itself. Do you want to give it a try? Don't you tell it! Go off those controls! <laughs> Someone looks a mite unwell. <laughs> yeah, we should call him the Green Baron. <laughs> Fort Big. Stop right there! State your business! Sergeant, I have to speak with your commander. I'm not bothering the commander of Fort Big just for any Joe Blow, so I suggest you mosey along, cowboy. Tell him Lucky Luke's here. That don't ring no bell. Hit the road. Uh, I'm the new test pilot for the Reverend Wright stuff. Yeah, sure, and I'm Princess Maria Romania. Come on, move your carcass. Such an amicable fellow. Yep, just don't get on his bad side. Don't see too many of you fellas at Fort Big. To Fort Big. Say, tell me more. Shh, top secret. And you? What you drinking, partner? Shh, top secret. Bartender, he'll have a top secret. And he said that silly little filly shall brought out the devilry and the old cavalry. <laughs> Let's go, old boy. I got the story now. Huh? <laughs> 
Thanks, Jolly. You are a horse of many hidden talents. I couldn't pull that off again in a million years. He stole the Kelvin Upter! Well, he won't get far with it. The Baron? How could he do such a thing? Because he's Dark Peppermint. Come, Come again? again? King of the bank robbers. Got the proof right here. Well, you'll have to show it to me, boy. In case you didn't know, Fort Big is where the nation's monetary reserves are kept. It's a closely guarded secret. Millions of dollars in new bills are hidden away in Fort Big's vaults. The Baron deceived me! Seems reach for the sky means something different to him. Oh dear, what are we going to do? There's one way out. are unstable. Looking mighty sorry for the king of the bank robbers, Peppermint. I do feel somewhat bilious. Ah! So who's the green guy? A Martian. This time I think your commander will see us. My dear Luke, you've opened my eyes to just how wild and dangerous my machines can be. I won't fly them anymore. The rooftops of Slumberville, thank you. So, Luke, will you be going gunless from now on? Mm, I'll consider it when the bad guys do. Use it with caution, then. You know, Woolly Pillow, I do believe I'm going to dedicate my life to a discipline more beneficial to humanity than aviation. Huh? What's that, Reverend? I'm taking up nuclear fission. I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy. Revolver and he can shoot a fly in the soldier. In 
the desert, there is person. Never a coup de téléphone. He's a cowboy, poor and lonesome. Il a pas peur de personne. Pas surtout des Dalton. Il a pas peur de personne. Dear Luke, what an honor for the town. Yep. <laughs> I just bawl like a puppy at funerals. Here he comes, here he comes! Somehow I thought he was taller. There's a world of Hoyt in those eyes. Must be a relative of the dearly departed. General Custer, the town of nothing gulch bows in humble veneration at the prospect of welcoming such a prestigious hero, a living legend, and one of the last true natural blondes. Are you sure that's not the welcoming speech from Miss Kitty? No, 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 no flowers. The general's allergic. Two flowers. Every stout-hearted and red-blooded citizen of Nothing Gulch joins me in proffering a hand to... Thanks. Great speech. You're welcome. Gentlemen, you gals as well. I can read your minds. You've had a belly full of underdressed, noisy redskins. You're fed up and you're not gonna take it anymore. So I shall send them back where they came from. To France! 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 Pardon me, General, but we get along fine with the local tribes. They're peaceful and neat and... Impossible. A redskin can't be peaceful. Those tricksters have sold you a bill of engine goods. <laughs> yep. The legend lives, though the brain has died. I'll go and offer him my condolences. Huh? You have my deepest sympathies. Ren Tin Dum, come here. Ren Tin Dum, what a noble name. And look at those eyes brimming with keen intelligence. I couldn't find a better mascot for the 13th Cavalry. Now what's he want to insult me for? What is he, crazed with grief? 13th Cavalry, prepare to follow your leader. And go! Wahoo! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that was almost as good as when the Laramie Players did a chorus line. Jolly, I think it's time we paid a visit to our old friend, Chief Honest Eagle. Peaceful Indians, who'd have thunk it? He did it on purpose! Ulysses S. Grant sent me to the only peaceful Indian region in the entire West! He knows that if I lead one more great redskin round, I become the number one general. Whoa! Whoa! He's scared! <laughs> general Ulysses S. Grant is trembling in his boots for fear that George A. Custer will take his place in the White House. Grant is nothing but a scaredy cat. Grant is nothing but a scaredy cat. Grant, come in. General, the regiment is ready for inspection, sir! Present <laughs> Hobbs! Let me reassure my brother of the pure heart and the swell bandana. It has been many moons since the no-joke tribe has traded in the tomahawk for the hoe. Our ferocious warriors have become peaceful planters and gardeners, and with the help of our great shaman, we have managed to transform this desert into a garden. 
That is, when he doesn't confuse the dance of the winds with the rain dance. You should know our vegetables feed six nations, and I'm proud to say that the quality goes in before no joke name goes on. Yep. I have a feeling Custer's more into blood and killing than he is to mud and tilling. Oh, oh. We have nothing to fear from General George Custer. It just so happens we're the exclusive suppliers to Fort Smith. How's that? This stew is made with Indian vegetables? Why, sure, General. Everybody around here eats no-joke tribe vegetables. They're 100% organic. That's enough. From now on, you use United States Cavalry sanctioned regulation vegetables. You hear me? But, General, those vegetables come from Minnesota. Yeah, so you got something against Minnesota? No, but those vegetables cross the desert under a hot sun in an uncovered wagon. There's a risk of scurvy. Then we'll all get regulation scurvy, Major Wood of it. That's not all, General! The cans explode when we open them, sir! Especially the beans, sir. No joke, tomatoes, over here! Hey, I was here first! Engine grown produce has been declared illegal! Captain, I demand an explanation. An order of the general! Chief Honest Eagle is licensed by me personally. There's no reason to prevent him from hawking his vegetables. No reason, you say? You are blind fools. Can you not see through this redskin ruse? They're just selling vegetables. Precisely. Vegetables. What could be sneakier? If nobody halts the spread of redskin vegetables, pretty soon everyone will be eating them. From coast to coast, the redskin will go rich and powerful, controlling a booming organic agro empire, which will bring the white man civilization of cans and chemicals to its knees. Then where will we be? We must stamp out this perfidious plant-based attack on the values we hold dear and dear. Did you catch any of that, Thelonious? Yep. He don't like tomatoes no how. With me, it's rutabagas. Man, I hate them starchy things. Get them. <coughs> Destroy the vegetable stand. You heard the general. Tear it down. Mission accomplished, General! I don't want to see a single redskin in this town! Honest Eagle finding it difficult to maintain composure. Easy there, Chief. I'll organize a little powwow with our short-tempered friend there, as soon as he dries off. I swear, I've seen that guy before somewhere. Rin Tin Dum never forgets a face. Cochise? Geronimo? Sitting Bull, of course! All right, I'll meet with this Chief Honest Eagle of yours. You won't regret it, Jen. Huh? What happened? The cook just opened a can of baked beans, General! Fine. Let's say day after tomorrow at 717 in front of the three cactuses. Is that splendid animal yours? He adopts me from time to time, but he's a little empty-headed. You mean that dog has a head? I wondered what that bulbous growth above his collar was. His name's ring a ding ding right? Uh, no, rin -tin dum Well, rin -tin dum how'd you like to live at the fort and be mascot of our regiment? Never. No one will ever know where my bones are buried. There's got to be a way to get him to change his mind. Looks like a rinky dink stain after all. Company, open your cans. Hit the dirt. All right, nobody move. Uh, maybe a bit too much sodium. Let the record state that I am willing to do everything possible to deal in a straightforward, honest way with you engines. 
Here are my conditions. The no-jokes will stop growing vegetables. What are they gonna eat, then? The army will take care of feeding them. We have a fine stock of canned vegetables. General, you keep this up, and the no-jokes will be on the warpath. Uh, their vegetables are subversive weapons! Honest Eagle is lover, not fighter, not want to fight with Paleface. And to prove it, I brought along our trusted shaman, who will soothe the troubled spirits by executing the no-joke peace dance. That was Drizzle Dance, and someone's in trouble if he doesn't smarten up. What an ignorant bunch of incompetence! You did that on purpose! That was a classic act of aggression! General, the no-jokes don't want war, and I'll gallop all the way to Washington to tell them so. As if the poor scrawny thing could gallop to save his life. Okay, 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 let's get out of here! He's in a black mood. You meat eaters are all so hot-blooded. You call these cucumbers or they look like gherkins? Since they said we couldn't buy vegetables from the Indians, I've been ordering from New York, and that's why they're all shriveled up. What are these, red peppers? No, ma'am, those are desert-cooked carrots. Well, I wouldn't eat one of those blighted things if you paid me. All I need is a good pretext for war, and then... <laughs> watch me make my move. Yes? General, the flag is blazing with our new mascot as you ordered, sir! Oh, uh, yeah. He's less impressive with his bottom half missing. Missing? That's the ticket! I'll lose that magnificent hound and blame the Redskins! <laughs> A crafty plan that would have made Alexander Caesar Napoleon proud! George Armstrong Custer, you're a genius! What was that? Peace and carrots, General! It's about time they got lunch underway. Friend Tin Dumb, go play with the engines. You hear me? Get gone. Such a masterly fellow. Friend Tin Dumb, you stay where you are. Play with the engines? Okay. <laughs> That's the army for you. The brass don't know what they want. Mascot of the 13th Cavalry kidnapped by the No Joke tribe, Custer prepares to launch a surprise attack of retaliation. It was General Custer himself who wrote up this article. No, my brother, we did not kidnap that poor homely dog. He wandered into our camp all on his own this morning. I'm sure Custer is behind it all, but what I can't figure out is what for. Wow, it's Gary Cooper! Oh, sure would be swell to get an autograph. The paper said Custer's planning to attack at dawn. That leaves us tonight. Two clever men and keen-eyed hounds should come up with a plan in no time. No one stand and guard the fort, General! No. I need every last man for this battle. Besides, it'll be all good to get away from this flea bag of a Ford for a while. Nobody here, General. There ain't a soul, General. General, the camp's deserted, sir! Wow, those tricksters, those mountebanks, those snakes in there! Honest Eagle is a big cheater! Go set their vegetables on fire! I prefer them steamed myself. Whoa, whoa. My fort! They took my fort! Captain! Is it a parade? Huh? Can I see? Huh? Can I? Can I? Can I? Bugler, sound the charge! Ready? Ready, my brothers! Fire! Help! 
I'm blind! I've been spinach! Help! Help! The General's been shot! The General's been shot! <laughs> I have murdered your Georgie. No. Ravioli. Ravioli? Ravioli with mushrooms. Mm. Gentlemen, we shall starve the brutes. I hope they know Dog does not live by salad alone. We have enough food to get us through the siege, but water is going to be a problem. Do not fret, my pale brother. We'll call upon our noble shaman to do his illustrious rain dance. Water we need will fall from sky at his command. Mm hmm. <laughs> Engine's mouths must be watering. What are we having today? Cactus, same as yesterday. Mm, I'm starting to miss them regimental veggies. This is all wrong. The besieged are supposed to starve, not the ones who are doing the besieging. But the trouble is, all our canned food stayed behind at Fort Custer, General. And we're surrounded by desert, General. Oh, Captain, your report? General! The mayor of Nothing Gulch has respectfully heard your request for provisions and has replied in the negative. He said you can go suck an egg, sir! As soon as I've rid America of the engines, I'll kick out every last mayor! Gentlemen, we will need to call for reinforcements and wash your putrid uniforms! The water's almost gone, and they're wasting it washing their uniforms. If Custer's so worried about his regiment looking good, it means he's set for backup. Hmm. I am counting on my brother's excellent brain to come up with some kind of plan. Got it. Okay, my brothers, strip. What's the meaning of this? Surely they're not expecting us to put on their crazy savage get-ups? Would my shame and brother honor us by performing the deep freeze dance? Hmm. Another hot dance craze. What'll these kids do next? It must be obvious even to you that what you did was fire dance. That's more like it. General, I suggest we put on those <laughs> engine guns, General, sir. No. Never! <laughs> this would kill Mummy. It appears the Indians have laid siege to the fort. Prepare to preserve this scene for posterity, young man. President Grant comes to the rescue of the feckless General Custer. The light is perfect now. See how the sun illuminates my good side. Captain, sound the charge! Enforcements are here, sir! But, but, what do they think they're doing? They're charging! My pure-hearted brother should be a general. I wasn't made for the army life, Chief. How I hate to get up in the morning. Yeah, with some kind of reinforcing.
Anyone can make a mistake, George, but what possessed you to dress up like Indians? Give us a smile, Mr. President. Ah, uh, no, not on your life. I can hear them all now. Grant charges his own troops, thanks to George, the only blonde engine in captivity. Mr. President, I bring a message from Chief Honest Eagle. As far as he's concerned, nothing happened here. He's absolutely right. Nothing at all happened here. Who said something happened here? Not George. Nah. If our great shaman can just nail the difference between the rain and deep freeze dances, the no joke will have a bumper crop at harvest time. Huh? Honest Eagle want to thank his pale face. Hmm? Huh? Custer went on to lead the renowned 7th Cavalry, which catapulted him into history by way of Little Big Horn. We're out number 10 to 1, but do we care? <laughs> what are arrows against muskets and guns? George! Mommy? I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy. an elixir of progress and fiscal success to the parched and satiable gullets of the future. I shall now relinquish the podium to allow our vice president a few encouraging words. This is our last chance, I'm afraid. If this doesn't work, we shut down the shop. Don't worry, just leave it to me. Let's review the routine one last time. You pull into a town, you approach the folks and hand out your samples, one to a customer, of cactus tona scaly wrapped for holiday giving, and you say... It's the time of year for a glass of good cheer. Wash down that big holiday supper with cactus tonus, the bubbly picker-upper. Gentlemen, let's drink to Operation Santa Claus and to looming sales of cactus tonus from Santa Fe to El Paso. <gasps> One wonders if the formula wouldn't benefit from a less vehement infusion of gas. Avril, would you hold still? God, a sneeze. I'm sorry, Joe. Avril, no! You boys made the mess, so don't expect me to pick up your toys for you. Stop talking like our dear sainted mother! Why don't you let us have a ladder? You'll use it to try and escape. I ain't no fool. Hey, Bob! Ooh. See if one of these chocolate bonbons don't tickle your palate. 
A soup song of rum. Yeah, just a smidge. Got any more of them? <laughs> Go on, get back to work. <laughs> what, what are you, you doing, doing, Joe? You numbskulls, help me! <laughs> hey, I tell you, Bob, this here's a man's bonbon. Real rock got goodness. <laughs> there we are. If the tree won't come to the Dalton boys, and the hut Dalton boys will come to the tree. Yeehaw! <laughs> Joe, you're a genius. Avril, the rope of tinsel, please. <laughs> Best escapes ever, huh? Just my way of saying Merry Christmas. Isn't anyone gonna say thank you? Shut your trap, Avril! Well, back to the salt mines, my friend. <laughs> huh? Where are them Daltons? Escaped again? Not only that, they have scarlet with all our Christmas decorations. We'll get old Lucky Luke to settle their hash. We can't disturb them now. It ain't nice to spoil a lonesome cowboy's Christmas. Can't wait to put my feet up in the poorhouse. I tell you, Jolly Jumper, we're gonna have ourselves a real cowboy Christmas. I can taste the boiled coffee and beans already. Ah, oh, Lucky Luke! You're coming to our little Christmas party tonight, aren't you? Well, Mr. Mayor, I, uh, I... You uh... turn us down every year, you <coughs> silly boy! But tonight, I'm insisting on your presence. It's just that we were planning Nonsense, for... Nonsense, a... my boy. Last year, you were on the trail of Billy the Kid, and two years ago, it was Jesse James. I'm sorry, you have no excuse this year, seeing as Margaret has baked one of her splendid pies in your honor. <laughs> Mother like daughter, if you catch my drift. So then, it's all settled. Nine uh, o'clock, don't uh, be late. Uh, uh, uh. See you later, Mr. Luke. <laughs> and thus did the jaws of the trap spring shut on the lonesome cowboy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody quicker in the snowball draw from Oklahoma to the Rio Grande. You're just a worn out has been lucky, Luke. Back in my day, the little whippersnappers were seen and not heard. Steve! <laughs> uh, maybe I'll get lucky and the Daltons will break out of jail tonight. After the folks down at Chester's Gulch hit a few swigs of cactus, told us they up and tarred and feathered poor old Francis and Bartholomew. And Wesley told me that Camino, the Apache chief, after just one swallow, went straight out to unbury the hatchet. What the devil is that noise? A stroke of luck. I reckon you four sorry hombres sure are lucky to have stumbled on us. Can't say the same for you boys. It's the Dalton's! Avril, I thought I told you to ditch the packages. And disappoint all the good little children of nothing, Gulch. So what's the plan, Joe? Hmm, we stroll calm as you please over to the bank and rob it. How can we be as calm as you please with everyone looking at us? Doesn't matter. They think we're a bunch of Santa Clauses. We just smile and wave. Try to look jolly and friendly. Look, stay the Santa Claus parade! Howdy, young fella, what would you like to say to Santa Claus? That he's a moron? Same goes for you and your mama. Hey, calm, Joe. Try to look jolly. 
And friendly, too. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves? What's he gonna think of Santa Claus? He's a moron, and his breath can stop a train. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, Joe. Your breath is worse than a swamp at high noon. <laughs> Dave's got that or I'll tell Mummy. Santa's gonna take you over his knee. Uh, no. Focus on the bank, Joe. Uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Have you been a good boy, mister? I swear, I won't touch another drop of the old lemonade. I'm starting to see things in quadruple. Yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. I already gave to the Santa in front of the dry goods store. Hey, it's yeah. Christmas. Santa says, give until it hurts, pal. <laughs> Ever put this in your basket. What is that, Avril doing? I'm coming, Joe. I'm coming. I just... Oh, lucky Luke. Lucky Luke? Oh, let's find moves. <laughs> Joe, I've been spotted. What do I do? Oh, bluff, you idiot. What else? Merry Christmas, my children! Uh, Start to hand the gifts out! Merry Christmas! Mm. Merry Christmas! Thank you, my good man! Merry Christmas! <laughs> Isn't this nice? And I have something for you. 30% off on the coffin of your choice. See you tonight, 9 o'clock sharp. Margaret will be beside herself. Better beside herself than beside me. Huh? <laughs> Joe, I haven't finished handing out my gifts yet. Avril, that stupid suit has gone to your head. Uh, Joe! Nothing goes. Now we'll find out if the distribution went off as planned or if they threw the packages into the canyon like last year's team. You can't trust the working class, sad but true. Help! Help! Our Santa Claus has just robbed the bank! <laughs> Yet more anarchy. They're the ones! Arrest them! Fake Santa's, huh? That's a hanging offense! String them up! You are making a most grievous error! So this is no way to treat honest fat cats! Our holiday coffin comes in oak with an all silk candy striped lining. That tree's decorated enough. Good sir, may I remind you that artistic tastes may differ. What's the meaning of all this? <laughs> Those two held up the bank, their two accomplices got away. Not for long, Aiden. You say there were four? Someone just rustled four of my horses. Oh. Thank you, Santa. Oh, the Daltons, the Daltons <laughs> stole our Santa suits. <laughs> Hey, Luke, there's a storm brewing. This is no time to go running after the Daltons. At least wait till the party's over. I've got to do what I've got to do. <laughs> oh, Steve, wait till I get my hands on you! <laughs> Come here, boy! The summer throwing days are over! <laughs> Come on, Charlie Jumper. What in the world's wrong with you? What kind of masochist goes out in weather like this? Be good, and I'll get you a brand new saddle. 
What kind of lowlife tries to bribe his own horse? As for the saddle, he's already bought it. We can't let the Daltons run right at Christmas time. How dumb do you think I am? It's not the Daltons he's worried about, it's Margaret. I don't believe this. He's an idiot! Another bottle. You told me to hide the money, so I hid it. I never said anything about hiding it in a gift box. When I had something, I had it good. <laughs> ah, you moron! So I'm lucky nothing Dolce ain't got that money package. I bet you he's having a nice Christmas. Oh no, the money was my present to me and I ain't let nobody ruin my Christmas. We go back to nothing Dolce. <laughs> Our oh. little Margaret wrote that song on her own. The hard part was finding words to rhyme with Luke. What's wrong with puke? That rhymes. <laughs> oh, do I <laughs> 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 Let's all sit down the supper, shall we? <laughs> you see, you're a lot better off here than out tracking the Daltons through the snow. My horse would agree with you there. Especially since those horrid creatures must be miles away by now. <laughs> Them, Joe, they got it. It is to your health, my turtle dove. <laughs> no, it isn't them, Avril. Hey, Joe, I gave him a package. Come, dear friends, come to the light. It wasn't that package, neither. That green stuff's causing me gastrointestinal upset. What's wrong, my lads? Was it something I said? Oh, never mind, Oscar. You and I shall party on alone. Just like we always do. Cabbage and pork lard. Nobody makes it like my little yeah. Rebecca. That was swell. Really delicious. By all means, have a little bit more, dear. No, no, thanks. I'd love to, but I'm watching my weight. But if you don't mind, I'd love to take a great big heaping portion to Jolly Jumper. No reason he should miss out on the fun. I gave it to him. Uh, so we meet once again, uh, Jack, a snowball, please. Merry Christmas! It's the weeny little Santa with the swamp breath. Ah! I'll pound him into Christmas pudding. You stay calm, Joe. Let's grab the money and beat it out of here. Golly, I wonder if it's in here. Hmm? From me to you, Julius. Merry Christmas. Gee, thanks, Rebecca. And that no! was for you. Merry Christmas, uh dear. Christmas from us to you. Where is it? Where is it? What is it you're looking for? We want our presents. <clears throat> Remember, Joe? I asked for a genuine Apache bow and arrow and a new pair of snuggle pajamas. Shut up, Avril. Could you tell me where's the present you got today in town? But, but <laughs> I don't have it anymore. I give it to Jed Smith, our neighbor who's a guard at the penitentiary. At the penitentiary! Jay, if we hurry, we should be there in time for the carol singing. All right, all right. I'll save you some pie.
going on? The Daltons! Where are they? Well, they left ten minutes ago. Then why have you still got your hands in the air? When they left, they told us not to move. Any idea where they went? To the penitentiary! They were looking for a package I gave to my neighbor, Jedediah Smith, the prison guard. <laughs> well, now, how's about we lower our arms and have a piece of Margaret's famous pie? Here to spend Christmas Eve with the gang? Uh, enough with the jokes! We want to see Smith! Man, it's the time I seen the Daltons trying to bust out, but I ain't never seen them trying to bust in. Give me the mayor's prison! We ain't got it no more. I gave it to Lucky Lou. Uh, uh, I wanted to say thanks for all the time you brung you fellas back to us. Joe? Joe, you all right? Say something, Joe. It's back to nothing goes. Joe, you hear that? Sounds like sleigh bells. Sad to have those kind of bells. It has to be Santa with those kind of bells. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. That's how you know for sure it's Santa's slide. Relax, <laughs> Avril. <laughs> yeah, right. As if a bunch of reindeer can... Whoa! Whoa! This dreaded frigid holiday season go faster. I'm freezing my assets out here. Get out of here, Luke. And a Merry Christmas to you too, Joe. <laughs> the package, Luke. Hand over the package. I don't have it. I gave it to a poor blind beggar. Santa Claus after all. Guns frozen to my holster. Those my guns, Joe. My fingers are frozen solid, Joe. My trigger finger won't fail. <laughs> 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 Kid, you have the fastest snowball arm from Oklahoma to the Rio Grande. I'm afraid Operation Santa Claus has proven to be a failure of truly disastrous proportions, men. Uncactus Tonus was never heard of again in the land. But it had not bubbled in vain. For only a few years later, a brand new carbonated cola drink would launch a wildly successful ad campaign using the beloved image of Santa Claus. And the world would never be the same. I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy. Chapeau, but who's this? Caballero. 
the Emperor of the Far West. When he began his revolver, he can shoot a fly d'un seul geste. In the desert, there is person, never a coup de téléphone. He's a cowboy, poor and lonesome. Il n'a pas peur de personne. Pas surtout des Dalton. Il n'a pas peur de personne. But be careful, cause it's hot! <laughs> the coast is clear, Avril. Come on out! <laughs> What'd he say? Uh, he said no, Joe. No? What do you mean, no? Come on out of there this instant, you knucklehead! I voted to escape after dinner. You lost that vote three to one. Now come on out before I bash you with the ball and chain! Escaping on an empty stomach is unhealthy. Where are we going anyhow? To the Mexican border. Once we get across, Lucky Luke can't arrest us. Good plan, Joe. It'll work for sure. As long as we don't pass out from hunger. Uh, Avril, I'm all brains and you're all stomach. Go gambling, Tin Tom. You disturbed my dinner to tell me the Daltons have escaped? Telegraph Lucky Luke. He'll find them in a jiffy. He always does. Ah, the warden's right. No use getting in a stew over this. And speaking of stew, it's time we had our dinner. When are we gonna eat, Joe? When are we gonna drink, Joe? When are we gonna rest, Joe? When I say so, sooner or later, we're bound to find some place we can rob. I sure hope it's a grocery store. Look at there, Mabel. That cowboy's got a hot date. Now I can pay for an orthodontist. Don't blow yet, Jolly. The Daltons have escaped again. What shall I do with the gate, Mr. Luke? Put it away, and I'll do the same with the Daltons. <sighs> Stand back, Avril. Your tummy is rumbling too loud. There's a wagon coming. It's still around two miles from here. Let's hide and jump it. Hmm? There's our victims, boys. But, Joe, we don't have any guns. Who cares? We're the Daltons, ain't we? What the falsetto? I'm down nice and slow, driver, or I'll shoot. Wow! A wagon full of him! You're trying to rob me with a fake gun? Sorry, senor, but I happen to know something about pigs. You see the hams in this wagon? Uh, oh, I made a plaster. I sell them to butchers for decoration. I have an idea. Let the for horse. I'm pretty sure he ain't made a plaster. <laughs> Giddy up, Avril. What'd you say, Joe? I said giddy up. We had some transportation till you went and scared it away. So now you're gonna be my horse. Clippity clap, clippity clap. I 
I'm hungry. Yes, four guys in stripes. The tall one tried to eat my plaster ham. Those were the Daltons. You were very lucky to get away, amigo. Goofy gringos don't scare me. Listen up. Here's what we're gonna do. Jump a passerby, steal his gun, rob a bank, then have ourselves one fine dinner. <laughs> How about we start with the fine dinner? Shut up, Avril. You're a horse, remember? <laughs> I said shut up! Someone's coming. Get out of sight. I can tell this will be a long night. I'm going to find a place to lie down. <laughs> That's funny. It smells like manure around here. Uh oh. <laughs> ah! Ah! Quit chasing me! I'm a horse! Nah, he's too dumb to be a horse. Uh -huh. ah! <laughs> Ole! Don't just stand there and do something! <laughs> ah! Ole! Get me off the head! You heard him, fellas. Whip out your hankies. Toro! Toro! Crimes to commit. Let's go. Ooh. Ooh. <clears throat> I think I ate too much. When I get my hands on those guys, I'm gonna grind them into cattle feed. What's going on here, friend? That's Gilbert Glutton, the rancher. A gang of outlaws just ate his prized longhorn bull, El Facundo. He was mighty partial to that critter. I seen who done it. Four men, Mr. Glutton. They was wearing striped shirts. They stole some horses and guns and broke into the drugstore. The drugstore? Yeah, they took every single package of seltzer. Well, what do you know? The Daltons have tummy trouble. They got worse than that. A price on their heads. 400,000, dead or alive. <laughs> He don't sound so good. He don't smell so good, neither. Wanna try some seltzer, Joe? It's surprisingly tasty. Why they eat all that beef? Ow! Oh, ow! Oh. <laughs> Let's rob us a stagecoach. That'll perk me right up. You're offering too big a reward, Glutton. I'm telling you, it'll cause me problems by attracting every bounty hunter in this country. I'm not changing my mind. By nightfall, there'll be wanted posters covering all the walls in this town. The men who ate El Facundo will be ground at the cattle feed. Yikes. Who'd want to eat a cow that had been fed on dogs? Personally, I wouldn't want to eat a cow at all. Carnivores are so uncouth. And that makes a thousand. I'll go tell Mr. Glutton. No need. I'll take those. You work for Gilbert Glutton? Exclusively. <laughs> I recognize him, boss. The rattlesnake, the ruthless bounty hunter. He once turned in his own mother for five bucks. Four hundred thousand bucks, Digger. If we get it, I promise I'll let you retire to a beachfront stud farm in California. And the short one didn't look too good. They rode off without stealing a thing. Wrong. The tall <laughs> one stole my fried chicken. So Joe's feeling sick. That should make our work easier, Jolly. Yep. Yeah. This is looking bad. And it's smelling even worse. <laughs> you know what I really like? Cold stolen fried chicken. <laughs> He's got to see a doctor. Put him in a saddle and let's go. You sound like Joe, something you didn't tell me to shut up. Shut up. 
Say, friend, is there a doctor in this town? Take a wild guess. Ah! Acute indigestion. He'll need some medicine. I was thinking cod liver oil, distilled coal tar, and a pinch of arsenic. And give him some seltzer. <coughs> it's real tasty. Prison food will cure what ails him. <gasps> It's Lucky Luke! Somebody hand me a gun! I'll, uh, uh, this is so sad. Uh, uh, sad and stinky! Uh, Coming here was your smart idea, William. Shut up, Jack. Uh oh. Will I be burying the sick one, Doc? Afraid not. Without my medicine, he'll pull through. <laughs> That can only be rattlesnake. I'll be right with you. Four horsemen went by, one with an upset stomach, followed by a lone rider moving fast. Let's get him. He really ought to eat something. It's the best thing for indigestion. When we was little, Mom used to make me chicken soup when I was sick. Can I make chicken soup, William? Yeah, right. Whatever, Alvaro. Go ahead. Really? I can? Sure, the boss says so. Shut up, Jack. I'll get it. You're not my boss, you loud mouth. You want to be a slam, you big brainless bonehead. We found him. And so has Rattlesnake. He's like a saddle sore, hard to get rid of. Don't worry, the fuse ain't lit. I couldn't find no chicken, so I thought I'd boil up a nice fat skunk. For you, Joe. <gasps> oh! <gasps> mm -hmm. Someone shooting, but not at us. On your feet, Rattlesnake. Lucky Luke. Nice to see you. So, we're both after the Daltons. That makes things easier. We'll team up and split the reward. Right, when pigs fly. Get moving. Forget it, Igor. Both two are thickeningly healthy. Sheriff, I want you to lock up this reptile. Hang on. I did nothing wrong. I was trying to catch four wanted men. Is that a crime? Don't think so. But this fellow opened fire on me, allowing the crooks to escape. It's him you ought to lock up. Could be. Sheriff, this legal warrant tells me to bring the Daltons back to prison. And my wallet tells me to bring them to Gilbert Glutton for a $400,000 reward. Well, in that case, I wish you both luck. Thanks, Sheriff. Hand over my gun. I'm sorry, friend, but that's what you call free enterprise. There's Mexico. Should we cross over? You decide you're the boss. It was smart of us to steal this hearse, huh, Joe? Too bad there ain't no coffin you can lie in. Oh, shut up, Avril. Joe, we're at the Rio Grande. Um, Do we cross? Uh, 
And what do you say? I said, um, blur. I can't stop him from tracking him, but I can stop him from shooting him. We're protecting the Daltons? Now I've seen everything. What the heck is he up to? Here's the offer. He pretends to capture us, then he sets us free after collecting the reward and splitting it with us. Why would he do that? Because then he could capture us over and over and keep collecting the reward. <laughs> Sounds pretty fishy to me. What do you think, Joe? I don't get it. Would you explain the plan again, William? Well, come on, boys. I don't have all day. OK, Snake. Me and my brothers have decided to accept your offer. Excuse me? Smart, very smart. Let's get moving, shall we? This place ain't safe. Looks like he's bamboozled them. Doctor, a hearse. Sorry, Igor, but the contents are alive. Hey, tell me, what's the matter with him? It's acute indigestion, and I ate all the seltzer. After I collect the reward, we'll celebrate with a roast beef dinner. I know what you're gonna say, Jolly, but until he breaks the law, I can't interfere. I wasn't going to say anything. I'm a horse, remember? All right, fellas, hand over your guns. Hmm? Before I set you free, I've got to hand you over, or Glutton won't pay the reward. Makes sense to me. I can't wait for that roast beef dinner. Did you see all the cows out there? Thank you. Nice work, Rattlesnake. Usually I bring him in dead, not alive. But this time, I reckon you'll finish the job. Here's your cash, boss. <laughs> what are you gonna do with them? I'll grind them into cattle feed. Ooh, that's unsanitary. <laughs> hmm, I guess you're right. Okay, then I'll try him, convict him, and hang him. <laughs> he really cracks me up. Oh, shut up, Avril. Court is in session. <laughs> we will now hear from the defense. Boss, these outlaws eat your prize longhorn bull, El Facundo. As defense lawyer, I urge you to show no mercy. Now let's hear from the prosecution. Make it quick. They're guilty. I know that. Prisoners, you have just been convicted of gobbling my longhorn. As punishment for this terrible crime, <laughs> I sent this all for you to be strung up. <laughs> okay, Rattlesnake, set us free and let's have that roast beef. You numbskull, I lied to you. I'm keeping the reward and no one's gonna set you free. Don't be too sure uh, about that. In case you didn't know, lynching's against the law. I'm taking the Daltons back to prison. I paid for a hanging and I'm gonna get one! Ah. All right, pick up your sick brother. You're all going back to jail. Stop him, boys! Sorry, but we only lynch on our men. Shootouts ain't in our job description. I'll pay a reward for Luke. 400000 It's a deal. Hey, Luke. Don't even think about it, Rattlesnake. I'm not letting the Daltons get away again. If they do, that's another reward. <laughs> I don't understand. Neither do I, but something tells me it won't work out well for us. Okay, I shoot Lucky Luke first. Glutton pays me the reward and the Daltons escape. I catch the Daltons, give them to Glutton, and get another 400,000. Then I catch Glutton, give them to the Daltons. No, that's not it. 
Hey, Snake, when you figure out who's who and what's what, send me a postcard, huh? Let's go, William. Stop! Forget it, Glutton. If you shoot Luke, I lose 400,000. If he shoots you, I lose twice that. What's going on? I'm even more confused than usual. Shut up, Averill! This is our chance to escape. <laughs> Rattlesnake just knocked off Snowdrop, my prized dairy cow. I'm offering an award for him, 400,000. Find a bounty hunter, Glutton. I work for the law. As I predicted, you found them in a jiffy. You'll stay for dinner, won't you? To celebrate, I'm having the cook whip up an extra special treat, a roast beef. Sorry, Warden. There's a cake waiting with his name on it. Can I go on right now? Shut up, Avril! Dinner time! I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy. gonna love it, but be careful, cause it's hot. <laughs> the coast is clear, Avril. Come on out. <laughs> what would he say? Uh, he said no, Joe. No? What do you mean, no? Come on out of there this instant, you knucklehead. I voted to escape after dinner. You lost that vote three to one. Now come on out before I bash you with the ball and chain. Escaping on an empty stomach is unhealthy. Where are we going anyhow? To the Mexican border. Once we get across, Lucky Luke can't arrest us. Good plan, Joe. It'll work for sure. As long as we don't pass out from hunger. Uh, Avril, I'm all brains and you're all stomach. Go gambling, Tin Dum. You disturbed my dinner to tell me the Daltons have escaped? Telegraph Lucky Luke. He'll find them in a jiffy. He always does. Ah, the warden's right. No use getting in a stew over this. 
And speaking of stew, it's time we had our dinner. When are we gonna eat, Joe? When are we gonna drink, Joe? When are we gonna rest, Joe? When I say so, sooner or later, we're bound to find some place we can rob. I sure hope it's a grocery store. Look at there, Mabel. That cowboy's got a hot date. Telegram for Lucky Luke. Now I can pay for an orthodontist. Don't blow yet, Jolly. The Daltons have escaped again. What shall I do with the gate, Mr. Luke? Put it away, and I'll do the same with the Daltons. <sighs> Stand back, Avril. Your tummy is rumbling too loud. There's a wagon coming. It's still around two miles from here. Let's hide and jump it. <laughs> There's our victims, boys. But, Joe, we don't have any guns. Who cares? We're the Daltons, ain't we? Whoa, there, falsetto. I'm down nice and slow, driver, or I'll shoot. Wow! A wagon full of him. You're trying to rob me with a fake gun? Sorry, senor, but I happen to know something about pigs. You see the hams in this wagon? Uh -huh. I made a plaster. I sell them to butchers for decoration. I have an idea. That ain't the horse. I'm pretty sure he ain't made a plaster. <laughs> Giddy up, Avril. What'd you say, Joe? I said giddy up. We had some transportation till you went and scared it away. So now you're gonna be my horse. Clippity clop, clippity clop. I'm hungry. Yes, poor guys in stripes. The tall one tried to eat my plaster ham. Those were the Daltons. You were very lucky to get away, amigo. Goofy gringos don't scare me. Listen up. Here's what we're gonna do. Jump a passerby, steal his gun, rob a bank, then have ourselves one fine dinner. <laughs> How about we start with the fine dinner? Shut up, Avril. You're a horse, remember? <laughs> I said shut up! Someone's coming. Get out of sight. I can tell this will be a long night. I'm gonna find a place to lie down. <laughs> That's funny. It smells like manure around here. Uh oh. <laughs> ah! Ah! Quit chasing me! I'm a horse! Nah, he's too dumb to be a horse. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Ole! Don't just stand there and do something! <laughs> ah! Ole! Ole! You heard him, fellas. Whip out your hankies. Toro! Toro! crimes to commit. Let's go. Ooh. <clears throat> I think I ate too much. When 
I get my hands on those guys, I'm gonna grind them into cattle feed. What's going on here, friend? That's Gilbert Glutton, the rancher. A gang of outlaws just ate his prized longhorn bull, El Facundo. He was mighty partial to that critter. I seen who done it. Four men, Mr. Glutton. They was wearing striped shirts. They stole some horses and guns and broke into the drugstore. The drugstore? Yeah, they took every single package of seltzer. Well, what do you know? The Daltons have tummy trouble. You got worse than that. A price on their heads. 400,000, dead or alive. <laughs> He don't sound so good. He don't smell so good, neither. Want to try some seltzer, Joe? It's surprisingly tasty. <laughs> Why they eat all that beef? Ow! Ow! <laughs> Let's rob us a stagecoach. That'll perk me right up. You're offering too big a reward, Glutton. I'm telling you, it'll cause me problems by attracting every bounty hunter in this country. I'm not changing my mind. By nightfall, there'll be wanted posters covering all the walls in this town. The men who ate El Facundo will be ground at the cattle feed. Yikes. Who'd want to eat a cow that had been fed on dogs? Personally, I wouldn't want to eat a cow at all. Carnivores are so uncouth. And that makes a thousand. I'll go tell Mr. Glutton. No need. I'll take those. You work for Gilbert Glutton? Exclusively. <laughs> I recognize him, boss. This rattlesnake, the ruthless bounty hunter. He once turned in his own mother for five bucks. 400,000 bucks, Digger. If we get it, I promise I'll let you retire to a beachfront stud farm in California. And the short one didn't look too good. They rode off without stealing a thing. Wrong. The tall one <laughs> stole my fried chicken. So Joe's feeling sick. That should make our work easier, Jolly. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is looking bad. And it's smelling even worse. <laughs> you know what I really like? Cold stolen fried chicken. <laughs> He's got to see a doctor. Put him in a saddle and let's go. You sound like Joe, something you didn't tell me to shut up. Shut up! Say, friend, is there a doctor in this town? Take a wild guess. Ah! Acute indigestion. He'll need some medicine. I was thinking cod liver oil, distilled coal tar, and a pinch of arsenic. And give him some seltzer. <coughs> it's real tasty. Prison food will cure what ails him. <gasps> it's Lucky Luke. Somebody hand me a gun. I'll, uh, uh, this is so sad. Uh, uh, sad and stinky. Uh, Coming here was your smart idea, William. Shut up, Jack. Uh oh. I be burying the sick one, Doc. Afraid not. Without my medicine, he'll pull through. Ah. R S. That can only be rattlesnake. Be right with you. <laughs> All clear, fellas. Four horsemen went by, one with an upset stomach, followed by a lone rider moving fast. Let's get him. He really ought to eat something. It's the best thing for indigestion. When we was little, Mom used to make me chicken soup when I was sick. Can I make chicken soup, William? 
Yeah, right. Whatever, Alvaro. Go ahead. Really? I can? Sure, the boss says so. Shut up, Jack. I'll get it. You're not my boss, you loud mouth. Yes, I am, you big brainless bonehead. We found him. And so has Rattlesnake. He's like a saddle sore, hard to get rid of. Don't worry, the fuse ain't lit. I couldn't find no chicken, so I thought I'd boil up a nice fat skunk. For you, Joe. <gasps> oh. <gasps> mm -hmm. Someone shooting, but not at us. On your feet, Rattlesnake. Lucky Luke. Nice to see you. So, we're both after the Daltons. That makes things easier. We'll team up and split the reward. Right, when pigs fly. Get moving. Forget it, Igor. Both two are thickeningly healthy. Sheriff, I want you to lock up this reptile. Hang on. I did nothing wrong. I was trying to catch four wanted men. Is that a crime? Don't think so. But this fellow opened fire on me, allowing the crooks to escape. It's him you ought to lock up. Could be. Sheriff, this legal warrant tells me to bring the Daltons back to prison. And my wallet tells me to bring them to Gilbert Glutton for a $400,000 reward. Well, in that case, I wish you both luck. Thanks, Sheriff. Hand over my gun. I'm sorry, friend, but that's what you call free enterprise. There's Mexico. Should we cross over? You decide you're the boss. It was smart of us to steal this hearse, huh, Joe? Too bad there ain't no coffin you can lie in. Oh, shut up, Avril. Joe, we're at the Rio Grande. Um, Do we cross? Uh, what do you say? He said, um, blur. I can't stop him from tracking him, but I can stop him from shooting him. We're protecting the Daltons? Now I've seen everything. What the heck is he up to? offer. He pretends to capture us, then he sets us free after collecting the reward and splitting it with us. Why would he do that? Because then he could capture us over and over and keep collecting the reward. <laughs> Sounds pretty fishy to me. What do you think, Joe? I don't get it. Would you explain the plan again, William? Yeah. Well, come on, boys. I don't have all day. Okay, Snake. Me and my brothers have decided to accept your offer. Excuse me? Smart, very smart. Let's get moving, shall we? This place ain't safe. Looks like he's bamboozled them. Doctor, a hearse. Sorry, Igor, but the contents are alive. Hey, tell me, what's the matter with him? It's acute indigestion, and I ate all the seltzer. After I collect the reward, we'll celebrate with a roast beef dinner. I know what you're gonna say, Jolly, but until he breaks the law, I can't interfere. I wasn't going to say anything. I'm a horse, remember? All right, fellas, hand over your guns. Mm -hmm. Before I set you free, 
I've got to hand you over, or Glutton won't pay the reward. Makes sense to me. I can't wait for that roast beef dinner. Did you see all the cows out there? Thank you. Nice work, Rattlesnake. Usually I bring him in dead, not alive. But this time, I reckon you'll finish the job. Here's your cash, boss. <laughs> what are you going to do with them? I'll grind them into cattle feed. Ooh, that's unsanitary. <laughs> hmm, I guess you're right. Okay, then I'll try them, convict them, and hang them. <laughs> he really cracks me up. Oh, shut up, Avril. Court is in session. <laughs> we will now hear from the defense. Boss, these outlaws eat your prize longhorn bull, El Facundo. As defense lawyer, I urge you to show no mercy. Now let's hear from the prosecution. Make it quick. They're guilty. I know that. Prisoners, you have just been convicted of gobbling my longhorn. As punishment for this terrible crime, <laughs> I sentence all four of you to be strung up. <laughs> Okay, Rattlesnake, set us free and let's have that roast beef. You numbskull, I lied to you. I'm keeping the reward and no one's gonna set you free. Don't be too sure uh. about that. In case you didn't know, lynching's against the law. I'm taking the Daltons back to prison. I paid for a hanging and I'm gonna get one. All right, pick up your sick brother. You're all going back to jail. Stop him, boys! Sorry, but we only lynch on our men. Shootouts ain't in our job description. I'll pay a reward for Luke. 400000 It's a deal. Hey, Luke. Don't even think about it, Rattlesnake. I'm not letting the Daltons get away again. If they do, that's another reward. <laughs> I don't understand. Neither do I, but something tells me it won't work out well for us. Okay, I shoot Lucky Luke first. Glutton pays me the reward and the Daltons escape. I catch the Daltons, give them to Glutton, and get another 400000 Then I catch Glutton, give them to the Daltons. No, that's not it. Hey, Snake, when you figure out who's who and what's what, send me a postcard, huh? Let's go, William. Stop! Forget it, Glutton. If you shoot Luke, I lose 400,000. If he shoots you, I lose twice that. What's going on? I'm even more confused than oh, usual. Shut up, Averill. This is our chance to escape. Rattlesnake just knocked off Snowdrop, my prized dairy cow. I'm offering an award for him, 400,000. Find a bounty hunter, Glutton. I work for the law. As I predicted, you found them in a jiffy. You'll stay for dinner, won't you? To celebrate, I'm having the cook whip up an extra special treat, a roast beef. Sorry, Warden. There's a cake waiting with his name on it. Can I go on right now? Shut up, Avril! Dinner time! I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy.
Frontier of Ohio, wearing his beautiful chapeau but who's this Caballero? The Emperor of the Far West, when he again his revolver and he can shoot a fly in a seul gest. In the desert, there is person, never a coup de téléphone. He's a cowboy, poor and lonesome. Il a pas peur de personne. Pas surtout des Dalton. Il a pas peur de personne. Well, I guess that means it isn't a bill. <laughs> I have some very good news for you. I've fallen in love with a wonderful man. His name is Horace, and we're getting married in three days. I'm sure you'll be as fond of him as I am, and I want you to respect him, because he's the new head of our family. Hugs and kisses, your loving mother. And it's signed, Ma Dalton. What you to respect flirt? Go ahead, you to do. Yeah, congratulations, guys. Oh. Joe, you don't look so good. You seem awful anxious to go to that wedding, Joe. I ain't going to no wedding. Uh, it's going to be a funeral. Si, what kind of dress do you figure Ma will wear? Something simple. Oh, yeah. Uh, simple and black! Uh, you think Ma'll give us a baby brother? Avril, shut, shut up. up! When I meet this Horace fella, I'll show him who's top dog. That's the ugliest rabbit I ever saw. What kept you so long? Oh no! Lucky Luke! If you four want to make it to the ceremony, we'd better go. <laughs> the ceremony? I don't get it. The warden's given you a two-day leave to attend your mother's wedding, as long as I'm your chaperone. I'm gonna get rid of Lucky Luke, and after that, I'm gonna take care of Horace. No, no, no. First, I'll get Horace, then Lucky Luke. Ah, who cares? As long as I finish them both off. Oh, you beautiful creature, queen of my heart. I can't bear to wait another two days until the youthful figure, those ruby lips and deep blue eyes are mine at last. Hey, Horace! What's the big idea calling the brown eyes blue? They reflect the light of the sky, my prairie oyster. <laughs> How romantic. Oh, joy of my life. When I see your face, I hear the sweet music of love murmuring. Hi, Ma! We're home! Avra, Jack, William, Joe, they're all here! I thought your sons were doing several hundred years of hard labor. I guess they busted out to be at their mama's wedding. Oh, they always were such thoughtful children. <laughs> This puts a serious wrinkle in my plan. Or a old spot, you're going to have to be extra devious. Avril, my little baby! Uh, Howdy, Ma! Howdy, Ma! Uh, Howdy, Ma! I'm so happy you were able to make it here for... Hmm? That was fast. I'm not arresting them, Ma. They got permission to stay here for two days. That is, as long as they behave themselves. Oh, don't you worry. These boys are gonna behave like perfect little angels, ain't that right? Oh, yeah, Ma. My dear children, how glad I am to meet you. Ma's told me so much about you. Call me Daddy. All right, Daddy. I'm gonna tell you live from live. I'm gonna beat you to a pulp. Joe, stop picking on your brother this instant. Are you a member of the family? You could say that. I'm Lucky Luke. Lucky Luke? Uh, it's a pleasure. I'm Horace Lafayette Jackson, the future husband of Ma Dalton. Ain't he cute? Let's eat! Ah, 
Uh, say, Ma, why'd you dig all those holes in the garden? I didn't do that. It was Horace. Oh, uh, yes, I was just airing out the topsoil. Gardening happens to be my hobby, William. <laughs> oh, I'm not William. I'm Avril. <laughs> Calm down, Joe. You gotta be patient. Let's get to know the guy before we do him in. Yes, indeed. From the moment I met your mother, it was love at first sight. Everything about her arouses my passion. From the sound of her footsteps in the early morning to the sight of her hair on the pillow illuminated by a single shaft of moonlight. Hey, Ma! I'm still feeling hungry. Can I have some more grub? Why, sure, I'll go get it. Okay, I know him. Now can I plug him? Jackie, what are you doing? My name is Joe! Relax, Horace. Joe is a terrible shot. Never, you seem to be slightly upset about something. It's Joe! Joe's just welcoming Horace into the family, Ma. Oh, that boy reminds me of his dear departing father. Always so full of enthusiasm. Unless I'm mistaken, that furry creature is a kitty cat. And dogs are supposed to chase kitty cats. <laughs> that's no kitty cat, that's a dog eating tiger. Ma, I took one just last year. And people think marrying for money is a piece of cake. Well, where's Lucky Luke? He's asleep, Joe. Are you sure? I asked if he was asleep, and he said yes. Perfect. Avril, go into town and tell Horace that Ma wants to meet him beside the well. What's with you? Ma, you've changed suddenly. Your voice, your face. You have a mustache. Mm -hmm. Howdy, Avril. Howdy, Luke. I see Joe's as short-tempered as ever. It's not Joe, it's Ma. She's different. This is the first time she's ever hit me, and, and she's got a mustache. Good old Ma. Look at how she kept all our favorite toys. Joe, I think she's quite attached to Horace. Yeah, if you do him in, you're gonna make her sad. She won't suspect a thing. It'll look like an accident. Rintin Dumb, where have you been? Must try to warn him. There's a fierce tiger, uh, and it almost caught me. Uh, I've had a lousy day. I've never seen a dog fall asleep so soon after taking a nap. As for me, I think I'll take a little moonlight stroll. Now, you wait right here, Daddy, and I'll tell her you've arrived. I wonder what the old bag wants at this hour. <sighs> Maybe she's finally going to tell me where the family loot is hidden. So she is. Horace, it's time to turn on the charm. Oh, my celestial darling. When you appear, the stars up in the sky grow dim. <laughs> Do you want me to tell you why I called you here? Let me guess, Sunny Pie. You've decided that the time has come to show your adoring future husband something that you had hidden away? Right. My six shooter. What the heck have I done with it? You know you can trust me with all your secrets. My arms are with you, baby doll. No! <laughs> Gotta be in here somewhere. Too bad Jolly Jumper's not here. He likes a good romance. So, playing out to get there, you. You know that excites me. Come to me, my love. I gotta find the six shooter. I'm not the woman you think I am! Avril, come down! I got Avril, my name is Joe! Jolly would have loved this. Oh, 
Who's making such a racket in the middle of the night? I've got to win that little runt over to my side. Someone get me out of here! I guess I'd better do it. No one else is around. Kinda late to be taking a dip, ain't it, Joe? But it's not too late to fill you full of lead! On second thought, I'll let you swim all night. Excuse me a second, old buddy. I may be his buddy, but I'm not old. What you got under there, Joe? Uh, under where? Do you know what he's getting at, fellas? Sorry, Luke, but I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about that. I'll get him. I swear I'll get him. But, Joe, if you do get Horace... Mom is sure to give us all a spanking. And take it from me, she packs a real wallop. I meant Lucky Luke. Oh, well, that's fine. I don't get it. What's fine? You're confusing me. <laughs> Feeling sick, Joe? Well, I'll give you a nice suppository later. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like this show's going on the road, Jolly. Let's follow. <laughs> There's no way I'm staying alone with the tiger. Just my luck. That canine cretin is tagging along. My doggy intuition tells me that the horse wants to be my friend. How oh, hard warm. I'll stick close to him. Howdy, Ma. I hear you're getting there. It's the Daltons! Hey, that was old man Foster. I guess he's still the bank manager. And he was obviously tickled pink to see us. Ah, well, here we are at the tailor shop. Armor, I have some clients for you. Seems like a nice place. Too bad there's a moronic mutt wrecking the scenery. Oh, we'll wait here for the Daltons. Joe, a senor cowboy, is it the truth there's going to be a wedding in this town? Yep, there sure is. Luigi Paparazzi, photographer, I do weddings and hangings. Name's Lucky Luke, lonesome cowboy. And I'm Jolly Jumper, horse. Lucky Luke, the Lucky Luke. You have to let me take your picture. Stay there, I'll get to my camera. Can I have one of these? Sure, help for yourself to any picture you want. Now, I need you to give me a dramatic pose, like you're arresting the Daltons. <laughs> Yep, I can do that. These lousy duds make me look just like a banker. Would have preferred something with yellow stripes. I don't feel quite right wearing anything else. In those suits, the Daltons don't look scary. Did he just say that my sons don't look scary? Mr. Paparazzi, I'll have you know these boys come from a long line of thieves, swindlers, and rascals, and they most certainly are very scary. <laughs> you tell them, huh? <laughs> All right, now, we're the scariest gang in the West. Of course you are, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Horace, that wasn't a nice thing to do. Forgive me, darling, but I can't stand the thought of Lucky Luke bringing your, uh, correction, bringing our sons back to jail. The very idea that our family might be broken up fills my heart with sadness. So I bashed him on the head. Oh, Horace, you're so thoughtful. Shoot Lucky Luke, better yet, boil him in oil. There'll be absolutely no suit for boiling in oil on the wedding day. I want you to lock him up in the barn during the ceremony. You can escape afterwards. What do you say to Daddy? Thank you for waiting. Now say a cheese. Hey, haven't we met before? Yes, your name is... Horace Lafayette Jackson, a future daddy to the Dortons. Uh, uh, right, whatever you say. <laughs> Get 
I can't do it. Ah, uh, yes, you can, Joe. Try a little harder. Do it for mom. That's uh, no use. I give up. <laughs> Don't you worry. I'll look after Ma while you're knocking over banks, attacking stagecoaches, and robbing trans. You weird horse. You've proven that you deserve to be part of our family. And so I give you permission to bury my mother. <laughs> You won't regret it. Okay, is everybody ready? Oh, Ma, you wonder of womanhood, you veritable Venus. You are truly the goddess of my heart. Goddess, huh? Oh, I like that. Well, enough chit chat. The preachers are waiting. Oh, I almost forgot. You go on ahead. I have some unfinished business to take care of. Yeah. Uh, tell me, Joe. No, I'm not Joe. I'm Avril today. Rat and rat. No, tell me, Avril, do you boys have some hidden loot? Hidden loot? Uh, no. Huh? Well, well, look at you, Luke. All trussed up and no place to go. I've waited a long time for this. <laughs> hey, what do you know? They're rehearsing a circus routine. Look what I got from my daddy. Judging from this nasty bump on my head, I'd say Horace is fitting right in with the family. Exactly. He's in, you're out. I'm sure he'd make a fine husband for Ma. If he weren't already married. What do you mean, already married? Yeah, of course it's a circus. That explains the tiger. He is married. I have proof. Show me or I'll do you in. No, cut me down, then I'll show you. Once you cut me down, if I'm putting you on, then you can do me in. Huh? Uh, stop! You're mixing me up! Come on, Joe. How can anyone mix up a dimwit like you? <laughs> Joe, don't you think it's time you let me down? I didn't hear even once! <laughs> I invited everyone in town to this wedding. How come nobody's turned up? Don't you worry, Ma. Jack's taking care of it. Do you have a little treasure hidden away? Mm, a little treasure? Afraid not, Daddy. <laughs> Now, I hope Joe isn't going to be too late. So he has been married before. Wait until Ma hears about this. Horace is sneaky. He'll find a way to convince her that we're the ones who are lying. We've got to trick him into exposing himself. You have an idea? Mm-hmm. I sure do. They're awful. I'll show them a real circus routine. I'll do a triple jackknife forward backflip. <laughs> I fell on my keys. On his circle, we can't wait anymore. Till when Joe finally arrives, I'm gonna send his backside something fierce! Preacher, get started! Dearly beloved, we've come here today to witness the union of Horace Lafayette Jackson and Ma Dalton in holy matrimony, for better or for worse. If anyone knows of a reason why these two should not marry, Speak now, because this is your last chance. <laughs> well, hey, I know a reason why. Joe, it's about time you got here. That dirty rat is already married. I'm single and I'm not a rat. Here's proof that he's married. It's a picture of his last wedding. Can't you see it's all a setup, Ma? Your son has always had it in for me. And I'd like you to meet his wife. <laughs> Don't anybody move or the old bat gets it. Horace, you have such a way with words. How do you think you're calling an old bat? 
Sweetie, uh, can I rephrase that? <laughs> now hold the hands and it's the cheese. I meant to do that. Such style, such grace. Now there's a circus routine. <laughs> Somebody do something about that tiger. It's a menace. That's a pretty dress. It's so pretty he can wear it to his funeral. So long, Luke. I've got you going, Yanya. <laughs> Hold it right there. Go. Oh. Right. The party's over. Okay, you four, back to prison. Just a minute, Luke. Do they have time for a little snack first? Let me get this straight. You've been married more than once before? Fourteen times in all. And each time you stole your wife's money that ran off? That's right. By the way, now that we're stuck in prison together, you can tell me, where did you stash all of your loot? All of our loot? What are you talking about? Don't play innocent. The Daltons are the greatest robbers in the Wild West. Where did you hide all of that money you stole? Ah, oh, we never got the chance to hide anything we stole, because Lucky Luke always arrested us first. Now, Warden, the new inmate's cracked up. He's hitting himself on the head with his own sledgehammer. I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy. Desert, there is person, never a good telephone. He's a cowboy, poor and lonesome. Il a pas peur de personne. Pas surtout des Dalton. Il a pas peur de personne. Sentence, they'll be in 212 annual prison talent shows. Now that's cruel and unusual punishment. Listen up, boys. Here's the plan. When we begin our act, we'll be bouncing up and down real innocent life. But then we'll start to bounce higher and higher. And when we get ourselves bouncing high enough, bingo, we're gonna bounce right over the floor. <laughs> The tattoos are ready, and it's lunchtime. I could go for some mashed broccoli. Here's your lunch, boys. Mashed broccoli. I guessed what we were having for lunch. And you know what that means, don't you, fellas? That means I've got supernatural power. <laughs> supernatural, huh? Then guess what I'm gonna do to you right now? Let's see. Uh, you're gonna jump on me and start wringing my neck. Exactly! <laughs> now calm down, Joe! What did I tell you? I really do have supernatural powers! <laughs> Those 
were the ragtime rockets from cell block D. They'll be back next year because they're both doing 10 to 20. And now one of the highlights of our show, a group that's come in all the way from solitary confinement. Let's have a big hand for the Dancing Daltons. <laughs> Second, what the heck is Avril? He decided to do his own act. He says it's a surprise. Fine, then we'll escape without him. Fellow jailbirds, today we will be performing an original ballet entitled The Flight of the Butterflies. <laughs> see the flight of the butterflies, not the escape of the Daltons. Lucky Luke wrecked my plan. He's always wrecking my plan. Now calm down, Joe. I will not calm down. I'm going to get that meddling cowboy once and for all. Silencio. I am of the great Daltona, and I will now show you my supernatural powers. <laughs> needed two volunteers for my demonstration, and you, little loud my fella, you will be one of them. What do you think you're doing, you knucklehead? <laughs> <laughs> now, who will be my second volunteer? How about you, the cowboy in the yellow shirt, come up on the stage? Me? After ruining their ballet, it's the least you can do. What? Oh, no. Not him! <laughs> As you can all see, the cowboy and the inmate have been handcuffed to each other. But I, the great Daltone, will unlock the handcuffs using my supernatural mental powers. Mental powers? You've got to be kidding. Please keep quiet, everybody, while I empty my head. Huh, don't bother, Avril. It's already empty. <laughs> <laughs> I command you to open! <laughs> Gee, I guess all that deep thinking must have strained his brain. Forget about him. Someone open the cuffs. I'm sick of being locked to Lucky Lou. Well, don't just stand there, guard. Hurry up and get the key. The key? We ain't got one. Those ain't prison handcuffs. What'd you do with the key, you moron? I want that key! Warden, if these ain't prison cuffs, then how'd they get here? Oh, wait, it's coming back to me. Ah, oh, yes, I remember now. A few days ago, we received a visit from a traveling handcuff salesman by the name of Longneck, Theodore Q. Longneck. He said we should buy his handcuffs, which he claimed were indestructible. Well, naturally, I assumed he was a liar, so I had him thrown out. He went on his way, and I promptly forgot all about him. But as he was leaving, he must have accidentally dropped a pair of cuffs. Avril spotted them and quickly grabbed them without anybody noticing. So what you're saying, Warden, is that no one's got a key. Does anybody have a file or other tool for opening locks? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's no use. Well, what do you know? They really are indestructible. Longneck was telling the truth. He must be on the road, traveling from prison to prison, selling his cuffs. We'll just have to search till we track him down. And when we do, I'm gonna throttle that Longneck! What's the matter, Mule? Whenever I set a hoof outside the prison, I start feeling kinda homesick. Your days are numbered, Lucky Luke. Oh, yeah, sooner or later, I'm gonna get you.
I'm canceling the war games. That tank is a lemon. It's a dud. I, General George Custer, have designed a magnificent war machine. But you incompetent soldiers went and built it with weak armor. <laughs> Calm down, General. We'll build another one with stronger metal. Did I hear someone say metal? This is your lucky day, gents. Because I happen to be an expert on metal, and I'm in the fortunate position of being able to sell you an alloy that is absolutely indestructible. I am Theodore Q. Longneck, and by mixing string beans with iron, I have created the world's first indestructible metal. Oh, really? Tell me more. We gotta find a way to get out of here. You mean escape without Joe? We can't do that. He's the brains of the gang. You're forgetting my supernatural powers. With Joe gone, there's nobody here to smack that idiot. I am the Great Daltone. Door, I command you to open. Hmm? Are you hard of hearing? I said I command you to open! <laughs> See, I got the door to open. I know I could do it. Seeing as how you have an empty bunk, I've brought you a new cellmate. Hey, why are you looking at me like that? turn myself into a pincushion. All we have to do to find Joe is follow the hoof prints. <laughs> oh boy, that's gotta hurt, Joe. I'm gonna get you, Lucky Luke. My brothers is sure to be on our trail by now. They're gonna jump you when you least expect it. Follow the hoof prints, great idea. So I made a mistake. Back off. <laughs> Relax, fellas. If you wanna know where Joe is, leave it to me. I'll use my powers. Yes, I'm getting an image. I can see him. He's in a black desert, and he's alone. No doubt about it. That's Joe. Yoo-hoo! Joe, it's me, Avril. <laughs> he's waving at me, guys. <laughs> That's your reflection, you bonehead. Uh. Cheer up, Joe. We're just going to ask if Long Neck came by. We're not staying. No vacancy. Huh? We're looking for Theodore Longneck, a handcuff salesman. I don't care who you're looking for. Go away. Dad, now that you mention it, uh, Longneck came by two days ago. When he left, he was heading west. <laughs> I have a headache coming on. We're gonna have to ride through the night. There goes my beauty sleep. Joe! 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 Shh! Shh. Quiet, you nitwit. We don't want to be heard. Oh! Joe! Where are you? Oh, Joe! Joe! We'll spend the night in this cave. It looks nice and quiet. Hey, do you feel that, fellas? There's a furry blanket in here. We'll be nice and warm. Huh? Oh, what's this? Feels kind of wet. That wasn't a blanket, you numbskull! Yeah. <laughs> Ugh! 
Nice peaceful night, huh, Joe? I'll get you, Lucky Luke. Hold it right there! Howdy, friend. I'm looking for a man. Oh. It is you, Lucky Luke, right here in my very own cabin. You know me? Yeah, I'm your biggest fan. I followed all your Wild West adventures. I'm gonna be sick. Yeah, I've got a collection of your pictures. Mr. Luke, I'd be much obliged if you'd give me your autograph and make it out to Hank Hornet. That's me. I don't know what to say, Hank. I'm just a poor, lonesome cowboy. Why did you give me your autograph? Why, well, sure I will. <laughs> Your friend's a weird one. He can get hot under the collar. I'm not gonna quit. Sooner or later, I'll get you! If you're looking for that long neck fella, you'd best check out Rope Gulch. Lots of folks wander into that town, and they stay forever. Thanks, Hank. Come on, Joe, let's ride. Good luck! You'll need it. Rope Gulch, hangings on the hour. You'd better behave yourself, Joe. Folks are high strung in this town. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, My name is Joe Dalton. Perhaps you've heard of me. I'm a well-known criminal. That's right, me and my accomplice just escaped from jail. What are you doing? Yeah, if they think you're my accomplice, they'll hang you. And if they hang you, that means I'll have finally gotten rid of you. Think for a minute. If I'm your accomplice, then you're mine. So if they hang me, they'll hang you. Say what? Stop right there. We'll have a fair trial, then we'll string you up. Hold your fire, Sheriff. I'm not an outlaw. I'm actually Lucky Luke. Yeah, sure. And I'm actually Queen Victoria. <laughs> I knew I should have stayed home in prison. <laughs> Dang it. I don't want to the noose. <laughs> you all right, Joe? No, I'm not. I'm exhausted, but I'm still gonna get you, Lucky Luke. Oh. You weren't scared, were you? No, I wasn't scared. I was terrified. I like eating make-believe food. Who wants a drumstick? Avril, you're driving me nuts! Hey, guys, you smell that? What? It's potato stew! This way! Good boy, Avril! Ah! No, Avril, stay! I wonder where Longneck is. After I get rid of you, I'll get rid of him! Glad you like my potato stew. Oh, let's sneak closer to him. Tell me something, Joe. If you had created a metal that was indestructible, what would you do with it? I'd make a suit of armor, then come after you. You'd empty your six-shooter at me, but that wouldn't stop me from wringing your neck. Armor? That's it, the army. Saddle up, Joe. Now that we found him, what do we do? We watch and wait for our chance. <laughs> There's still some potato stew on this rod! It scares me to think that we're related to him. Hey, soldier! Mm? My name's Lucky Luke, and I'm looking for a handcuff salesman. I have orders not to let anyone in, so get lost! You could at least try saying please. Intruder alert! Battle stations! Lucky Luke, 
Are you sure it was Lucky Luke? Yes, sir, General Custer. That was his name. He was looking for a handcuff salesman. I don't believe it. This can't be happening. Whatever I devise a brilliant plan, that cursed cowboy comes along and ruins everything. It's not fair. <laughs> Calm yourself, sir. I'm sure he doesn't suspect a thing. Really? Because my latest plan is really clever. I'll use my indestructible war machine to invade Greenland. Then I'll conquer Canada, and then I'll run for president of the USA! <laughs> Something tells me Long Neck's in there. And I intend to find him. <laughs> and I intend to get rid of you. What the? No, no. Ah, I've got you now. Ah! Shh. You know, some days nothing seems to go right. Here's your chili, Mr. Longneck, with Tabasco sauce the way you like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Avril, boost us over the wall. Why do I have to give you a boost? Just because I'm taller than you. Mr. Longneck, I presume? No. Uh. My name is Lucky Luke, and this is Joe Dalton. You've got to get me out of here. General Custer's crazy. He made me build this armored war machine. Did you ever see anything so ridiculous? Who'd want one of these when they could have handcuffs? And speaking of handcuffs, you got the key? No, oh, sorry. General Custer took away all my keys. <laughs> Hmm, Joe, I believe you just solved our problem. Well, I'll be. I guess this Tabasco sauce is strong stuff. We're leaving. Joe? Joe? At last, I'm finally gonna get him! <laughs> yeah! Hey, how do I stop this thing? something steady now stay very quiet you two because we're almost that's funny i feel like we're going backward <laughs> my tank it seems to be gone I have unfortunate news, General. My indestructible alloy suffers from one small drawback. When it touches Tabasco sauce, it melts. Not to worry, sir. I'm quite sure they have no Tabasco sauce in Greenland. Nevertheless, I want every bottle of the stuff to be shot! We'll get him next time. I missed you, Joe. We missed you too, Joe. Seeing's how I am the great Dal Tony, I predict when we get back to prison, mash broccoli for everyone. Avril, shut up. I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy. 